the fans, um, um, you know, now now that uh, they're not allowed in the in, in the stadiums, um, you know, they uh, are having to get their content uh, through uh, v- various uh, digital forms, through social media, through OTT uh, channels, and uh, what we're seeing now is that a lot of leagues are also really ramping up uh, their um, efforts uh, on these on these channels. And uh, for for example, Sport Radar uh, in in the UK. Um, in the lower leagues where fans were not allowed to attend. And usually that's how they watch the matches. We actually helped the leagues uh, get um, their content uh, on OTT. So fans could, uh, could watch that content. What does that mean? For, what does that mean for some of those uh, streaming services that are of course, delivering the content online? It must be a boon for them. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, you would think that um, a lot of the, uh, services out there, Eleven and the Zone and, and uh, ESPN Plus. Um, uh, uh, if you want to watch your favorite teams, uh, that's where the content is, and, and that's where uh, uh, one would have to go to uh, to catch those. What about the financial impact of not having uh, spectators at the ground in the stadiums? Because when you talk about some of these matches, sometimes there are 100,000 people that turn up. What's the financial impact like across a variety of sports when you don't actually have spectators in the stadiums? Yeah, indeed, um, the the financial impact is uh, very, very big. It's actually um, really big to the lower leagues uh, because they really depend on attendance for maybe 60, 70 percent uh, of their revenue. Um, when you get to the bigger leagues like the Premier League or the IPL, so much of their money comes from broadcast uh, these days that the impact is less. But still, it's a considerable uh, windfall. Uh, maybe you know, you, they uh, would be losing somewhere around 20 percent, uh, 15 to 20 percent uh, of their revenue. But uh, at least the bigger clubs, bigger leagues, they should be able to survive because of their, because of their broadcast deal. Okay, Asia was kind of first when it came to restarting, of course, sports and perhaps having some spectators back in the stadium. What can the rest of the world learn from how Asia has done this in places like uh, Japan and South Korea? Yeah, you know, usually when it comes to sports, a lot of the best practices is coming to uh, Asia from North America and Europe. But uh, I think in this COVID period, because of how well some countries in uh, Asia handled uh, the COVID situation, namely Taiwan, uh, Korea, Japan, uh, the leagues there were the first to um, to, uh, to restart. Uh, the the leagues in Taiwan were uh, considered kind of the first professional leagues to restart. Then you had the KBO, the K League in Japan, uh, sorry, in Korea, and then the Japanese leagues. Um, so a lot of the best practices you are seeing in in Europe and North America now is actually uh, they're learning from um, from uh, Asia. So a lot of the health and safety guidelines, uh, the testing, the bubble concept where you kind of isolate all the players. Um, the way they're uh, dressing up the venues uh, with the tarps, uh, with kind of the the fan mannequins uh, and cutouts, um, and various ways that uh, they're broadcasting the matches, spacing out the matches uh, for for broadcast purposes, uh, the uh, virtual advertising you're uh, you're seeing more and more. Uh, a lot of that is really coming uh, from um, from Asia. How much of a challenge is it to move teams around, not only in, of course, domestic countries, but internationally as well? I know in Australia there's been a lot made about moving teams across closed interstate borders and the difficulties surrounding that. No, it's a, it's a massive challenge, uh, especially uh, here in Asia, because you have so many different factors in place. Uh, different countries have different uh, COVID levels uh, and, and, and uh, amounts of people with uh, um, you know, the, uh, who, who have tested positive uh, for, for COVID. So, I mean, as an example, you know, the AFC Champions League is about to um, start uh, next, next week. And, um, you know, you're going to have uh, teams from all over the continent uh, traveling from one country to the other. And you might have regulations where, for, for example, a country, they might allow Japanese players to come in um, without quarantine. But then the Japanese club, they might have foreign players. Um, so then those foreign players they might not be allowed to uh, come in. And then, then you have the reverse leg. So there's many, many issues um, at, uh, you know, th- that need to be uh, considered. And, and it's, it's mm. been a real uh, challenge here in Asia.